friends, welcome back. It was a super relaxing, super great weekend for the Smith family. So I hope that you all were able to enjoy your Memorial Day weekend, were able to observe uh, respectfully a uh, sacrifice that was made by so many of our servicemen and women over the years, uh, but we're also able to sit with family and friends and enjoy the time away from work. I'm Sean M. Smith. I am the host of this program. Let's talk marketing. Uh, this is episode number 22 of a show that you've all come to know and love. I do so hope that you're able to hear me right now. So if you can, what I ask of you at this point, just to start the show while we wait for others to come in and join us, if you can hear me, jam a one in the comments section, just so I can know if you can hear me. Uh, would love to absolutely, completely and totally see that you guys can hear my microphone. Unlike last week, where I wish someone had told me that the mic was too far away, I would have moved it up like this or something, uh, just to just to be able to see what was going on. But that did not happen. So this week, uh, we got a good show. Uh, this one uh, actually focuses on something that came up this week. Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, we have actually started out now uh, with our own little group um, here on Facebook. Uh, I started a Let's Talk Marketing group a few, mm, three weeks ago now. Thank you. I'm going to say thank you because the man even said he could hear me. And that makes me happy when people can say they can hear me. Does it sound good, though? Does it sound good, or does it sound like I'm too far from the mic? Because uh, Sean Jackson in the house. Sean's here. Give me a one. Let me know he can hear me. That's good. The um, Yeah, we had uh, – I started a Facebook group. Um, I appreciate everyone who's shown uh, so far. I think we have 57 members of the group, which is great. Small growth so far. It's been very intimate while we're kind of defining what the group is going to be what we're going to be doing, how we're going to differentiate ourselves from other filmmaking groups that exist, uh, how this group that isn't just going to be about film uh, is going to exist. And uh, we had a bunch of negativity pop out, and that's what this week's show is kind of going to be a little bit about. Uh, but we're also going to do a jam board uh, at the tail end, uh, and we're also going to do the normal stuff too. Uh, we're going to do a jam board about Space Jam. I figured that was appropriate. Um and it's also a good evening, sir, from across the pond. Sound is A-OK -okay or O-A-K. It's oak. It's a tree, which is good because uh, it, that means it's solid, like uh, like this desk. It's resolute and also um, helpful. Thank you for the heads up. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to make this thing big ol'. Uh, so the significance of number 22 for me is pretty substantial. Uh, if you're into numerology at all, I'm not really, uh, but the numbers, uh, sometimes this one's pretty significant for me. Um, I am going to share my screen. I am going to pop this guy in here. I'm going to let you see it. Um, so number 22, substantial. Uh, my initials are SS. Uh, S is backwards in the mirror, art 22. Uh, I was born October 12th. 10 plus 12 is 22. My mom's birthday is July 22nd. 22nd is 22. Uh, just little things like that that always pop up. Um, so it's pretty pretty remarkable uh, for me. But this is uh, green is my favorite color. And obviously, as you see, neon green. That's my jam. So that's why I chose green for this week's show. Uh, this one's all about me. And it turned out that when we went to the topics, uh, neon was where we went. And then uh, when I said we're going to talk about negativity, I figured I'd do a little bit of coaching. Um, some I haven't had to do in a while um, because I'm all about the boop. Boop. I mean, making gifts of myself now. This is from my interview with Jason Horn, uh, Jay Horton, which if you haven't seen yet, uh, please go check it out. Uh, this is just his post about it that he put up over in. Um... Thank you, Stephen. I appreciate the compliment. I worked very hard on it today. It is a pain in the butt to do all the time, but I had a good weekend with the mustache at the wedding as well. You're on point. Um, yeah, no, Jay put up some really great stuff. Uh, this is a great interview if you've seen the two of us together. Um, it is not his most popular interview because it's not the most exciting to filmmakers. Um, on, on, to you know, on topic, when people are talking about marketing, it's not super sexy. Um, but you know, the filmmakers, but I think that there's a lot there that over time people are going to discover is pretty rad. I keep getting emails from it, um, which is really cool to me. 
Um, I now have certainly have 42, uh, which isn't that big a deal to you guys with substantial followings on YouTube, but I have 42 followers on YouTube now, which is cool, um, which I like a lot. So, um, but yeah, so go over to his YouTube channel, uh, check out the video. It's about 59 minutes long or something. Um, it's like the length of one of my normal shows, but we have a really great conversation just about marketing and stuff. I give him advice in his own channels, things of that nature. So it's good, but I'm going to plug that. But today, I want to talk about negativity. Uh, we 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 had a we had a moment in our let's talk marketing group. Look up let's talk marketing gr- the group, or let's talk marketing group. I think is what it's called. Um, and uh, it, we were just kind of like, man, this is kind of a sucky experience right now because we were having somebody come in and we we're talking about marketing. We we're talking about screenplays, as you've seen. Tim Tim Talbot comes in there and he's talking, giving out great industry level advice based on his experience and all the years that he was working in Los Angeles and his stuff with producer level acquisition. And, and, and here we are, we're, we're just suddenly getting crapped on and we're like, wow, man, like, you know, how do I, how do I frame this? And, you know, it, it, the negativity um, from stuff sometimes to people is, is like, you gotta, you know, you'll hear stuff like this. This is the kind of memes and stuff you see floating around, like stay away from negative people. They have a problem for every solution, you know, but the problem with staying away from negative people is unfortunately sometimes negative people are the people you love the most. They're your wives, girlfriends, boyfriends, husbands. They're the people that you've got to be around. Your moms, your dads, your sons, your daughters. I mean, sometimes my son is a very negative person. He's a great, loving human being. But like this kid, sometimes I'm just like, wow, man, like you are definitely glass half empty or glass seven eighths empty. And, you know, whatever. But, you know, I'm never going to get my iPad back. (laughs) But you're going to give it to him. You got to, man. So I was looking at some stuff um, online and I found some stuff that really speaks to me as far as uh, other coaching courses and other people that come out because negativity is something that I struggle with myself, um, especially with self kind of self doubt. I deal with a lot of imposter syndrome, but also I deal with a lot of, um, you know, the uh, inability to kind of shake other people's feelings. I'm very empathetic that way. I'm like an empath. Like, you know, if you're negative, who else feels that way? Who's gets other people's, negative feelings kind of stick to them and just kind of screws with their mood. Like I'll, I'll be in a great mood. I'll go into work. Well, I mean, going into work now is sitting in this room. Thanks pandemic. Um, but like, I'll, I'll be in a good mood and I'll be going into work and I'll be feeling it. And like, it just something happens and someone else's energy just kind of bumps up against me. And there's just friction and it just screws with me. I, I don't like how that feels. And so I kind of saw this and and it makes sense. So there's a way to look at how to deal with a person with such negative energy. And this is how um, I was kind of using it the other day in the forums, because I didn't want to, I didn't want to issue like a warning, like a formal warning, like, Hey man, like one of the key rules of, of this group, our group is that we're building as a community together is be rad, just be rad, be kind, be, be responsible, be passionate, but understand that other people don't necessarily have to agree with you. And debate is going to happen, but don't, 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 don't be a jerk. You know, I, I do want to say shit and stuff, but you know, I don't always want to be like, Hey man, you're being a bit of a, you're being a bit of a, an asshole, you know? And uh, I didn't want to say that because what he was saying was his opinion and it, it was valid because it's his, but at the same time, how he's expressing it and who he's expressing it to in the manner, like, I was, man, like this wasn't cool. So really what I tried to do at first was I tried to, I tried to use that energy and I tried to deflect it off you know, in, in a way that was like to the other guys that were involved and be like, listen, guys, you know, like, let's think of it this way. Let's let's use this to embolden ourselves. Let's use this negativity to embolden the three of us to be like, listen, man, we're so right in this moment. Like, look, you can you 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 could say something if you want, but you don't have to just know that I appreciate how you feel right now. Your positivity is so important to me. Right. I, I appreciate that. It's like good parenting. You know what I mean? Like you're really just, you're just working the parenting angle. And um, you also could do this. Listen, you could be sitting there. You can empathize with the characters. Like sitting and work at a cubicle you're right next to the person. And they're just, they're just dumping everywhere. They're just dumping everywhere. And they're just, they're sad. They're angry. They're not feeling it. And what could you do? Hey, man, I really, I really get it. I really understand how you're feeling. You know, your film, it came out and it didn't, didn't do that well you put a lot into it yeah i get it you know i did mine when i did mine it didn't 
didn't do well. You know, I, I thought that I was going to win so many awards at these web series festivals, you know, because and we did that instead of a film because we didn't think we could handle a feature. You know, we were so inexperienced and we made so many mistakes on the marketing. Yeah, but that's why I, but that, and here you go. Here's how you spin. Here's how you reframe that piece. But that's why I come out and I do what, let's talk marketing. You know, like that's why we do this so that I can, so that I can spin this. You know, I really can, I can turn it around and I can help people that may need that help, may need that redirection. And let's, let's do this together. You know, let's, let's see how we can help each other, you know? Uh, and that's how you shift it. You just kind of shift that responsibility. You take that, you take that moment and you go, Hey, you know what, man? Like, I got it. You know, I, I, I get where you're coming from. Let's just kind of let's just take this just a little bit and you take that energy and let's put this in a more positive direction without saying positive. Oh, my God. Don't make them think they're being negative. Let them think, you know, hey, you're there to support and understand without letting them think that you don't want them to think they're a negative person. You know, they don't think they're a negative person. They think they're a good person and that some stuff's gone wrong for them. You know, they're expressing their frustration to someone that they obviously care enough about to talk about you. So don't don't become anything less than an ally. Um, you know, you got to you got to do this. And I think that that's part of the shortcoming I had the other day was, I, you know, I actually got challenged to market the person's project. They dared me to work basically for free on their project. Um, and I, I turned it down because I don't, I don't work for free. And I, I basically was like, no, I, I don't work for free. I mean, I would literally need to in order to work the amount of hours, you know, the amount of hours it would take me to make this project profitable and then take half of that amount of money that you're promising me. I was like, it's the hugest gamble. I can't do that to my family because there's other projects coming down the pipeline for me. I've got other stuff that doesn't involve, doesn't even involve marketing that I'm working on. I have a screenplay I'm working on. I can't take this time away. You know, I can't, I can't do that to my family. I can't do that to me uh, after finally getting back into writing and how, how proud I am that I'm doing that. Like, I'm not going to gamble on something like that. That's disrespectful. But here's the thing. I appreciate that you had that confidence that I could do that. And then lastly, you, you enroll them in the process. Hey, listen, you know, you and me, how about this? Listen, the team right now, all of us in this group, we're all down. It's quiet in this group. No one's talking. No one is talking in, in the Facebook group here. I need someone to help me. I need someone to really help me jazz this up. And you've got experience. You have experience, and I think people would respect what you have to say, but I need you to help me and make it positive in here because no one's going to engage in a negative environment. And I think right now everyone's a little bit skittish because, oh, hang on, I'll be right back. And I'm back. And <laughs> I love that. And I think everyone's a little bit skittish to engage. And I think that because it's small and no one wants to say the wrong thing. And I think you're the type of person that could help us say the right thing. Would you, would you kind of stick your neck out with me? Would you do that? You know, would, can you can you be can you be that role model? Can you do that? You know, Tim did that. You know, I know I know when uh, when Zach's back, Zach will do that. You know, right now it's just a, it's just a bunch of people that are compatriots in this whole thing, and we're all in this together. And the idea is that I want to help you guys with the knowledge I have, and I want to build out what I can. I want to give you what I can, um, and that's it. And that's all I want. And to be honest with you, I wish that that was received differently the other day. Um, in my years of moderating uh, you know, message boards and running websites and comment sections and, and dealing with trolls, I, I don't like the term troll, but it's true. Uh, it's, a, it's, a valid, it's a valid troll because they sit under the bridge and they're angry. Um, but they're also gatekeepers to something greater. And you know, they can do something powerful with the information that they have. And they, uh, if you can get them on board and do something positive, you know, I had... I had a person one time that was a person that crapped on every single thing that I wrote, every single thing. And eventually they became a writer on my site and we're still friends to this day, Andrew and I, and not my writer, Andrew, not my co-writer, Andrew, like a different Andrew. Um, and he, he went to Duke and like, you know, I attended his uh, graduation virtually and stuff when he gave me the link. And, um, you know, uh, when he graduated law school, it was just crazy that that's who he was, but you know, as, as, as a high school kid, that's, that's where he's at. And to be honest with you, it's just, you know, you got you to get them in. You got to enroll them. So I, I just kind of hope this part made sense. This this is a little bit for me, and I, I think it's a little bit of a kind of opt-in for, like, anyone who's listening maybe is kind of on the fence about joining a group, um, may not understand necessarily, like, why there's a Let's Talk Marketing group. It's so that I can kind of build it as an offshoot where we do more in the community um, for each other 
than I can do here. Uh, not just making a pretty jam board, but I can share the jam board that I did that one week so you can see it again. Or maybe I can do a one-off video one time of this, or I can share a YouTube video that I did this time. And I just make sure that you guys see the assets that I'm doing and we're creating, or I can do a one-off interview. I mean, it's just, to be honest with you, it's important for me um, that I'm really giving to you guys. So um, that's, that's that. Uh, I don't know how to jump that quick. Um, but let's uh, let's jam. You guys want to jam? Give me one if you want to do a jam board right now. Give me one if you want a jam board. I'm going to drink some cold red through a straw because my mustache is stiff. Holy cow. That was, uh, that was intense. Oh, you guys want it funny? So yesterday, we drive back from New York. We were up there for a wedding. Son wanted a freezy at a uh, gas station, like a, like, a, like a gas station. Sean Jackson with the one. Sean Jackson with the one. So we're at the gas station, and I'm like, yeah, we'll do this one. So there's a frozen Sprite is one option. Frozen Sprite is one option. The other option uh, is like a Mountain Dew. And I was like, well, we'll do mostly. He's like, can I have some Mountain Dew? And I'm like, you know what, dude? Like, we're going to get in the car for like four hours. You know, like, I'll give you a little bit of Mountain Dew just for flavor. So for flavor. So I put the freezy down, and I pull the Sprite at handle first, and he fills that. And he's like, oh, it's so great. And there's just enough to pull a little bit. Bebop, and I pull the handle for Mountain Dew, and it explodes in the container. And I'm like, "Oh boy, there's so much!" And it's like full down the middle, like one of those cord uh, Ben and Jerry's ice creams, right? So that's what he's looking at. And um, he's like, "Oh, I'm so happy!" And he puts a straw in, puts it right in the middle, and just starts sipping right away. And we get in the car and we're drinking. He's like, "Dad, I can't believe you let me have game fuel." And then. It, I, I remembered looking at the banner above the freeze thing and I gave him Mountain Dew game fuel uh, frozen. So he was up till 11 o'clock uh, last night. He's very calm and kind, um, but he, he was out of his mind. So, yeah, that was it. Oh boy. I just had a friend write me on Facebook right now and ask who our sex ed teacher was. And I don't know. But I just know how sex ed went for the redhead in middle school. It, it went not well. Not well. A lot of embarrassment, a lot of, a lot of weird looks. All right, we're going to do this. i blow this sucker up. Uh, I'm blowing it up. It's going to be a fun one. I'm actually looking forward to this movie. I know that I felt it kind of sacrilegious to... Uh, to do uh, a remake or a sequel or whatever. I, I'm going to think it's a, like a legit remake of uh, Space Jam. But uh, what the hell? You know, whatever. It's LeBron. LeBron can do what he wants. Uh, yes, that's random. Uh, totally random. And the thing is, she's right. I do remember the teacher's name. I'm just not going to say it because if she hops on this live stream right now, uh, and I want the extra view. So I'm being very... <laughs> being very being very uh being very tricky um no i don't remember her name i don't sorry i just i just remember a horrible experience horrible experience with the girl i had a crush on um all right so here we go we're gonna do space jam everybody knows what space jam is about it's a bunch of aliens coming down to toon toon town and lebron james gets recruited by the tunes to uh save the day Put the team together so that he can, in fact, be the greatest basketball player in the universe. Okay, so none of that matters. Let's do this. You guys ready to play? This is a collaborative effort, not just a Sean collaborative effort, because we're already at the 20-minute mark because we talked a lot about me in this group and very little about you. Let me give you one second. Let's find the Filmmakers Connect. We're going to share this over to where we got... What other groups we have? Film. Okay. Okay. Didn't really do a good job of publicizing it, but whatever. Um, all right. So let me close the random. And I'm going to make this big again. Everyone can see this. 
So we are going to start with viral stunts. Guess what we're going to do? We are going to do some wacky. No, it's not do viral stunts. Yeah, let's start with viral stunts. And we're going to do it in yellow. Um, we are going to skin uh, L.A. Coliseum. I don't even remember if that's how you spell it. L.A. Coliseum in Toon Squad Colors for Premier Game. Uh, Monstars. I don't even know if they're the Monstars anymore, but we'll do it. Monstars. And Toon Squad make uh, appearance appearances for big event. What's the event? You guys got an idea what the event should be? I'll let you think about that. I'm gonna do a viral stunt. I'm gonna put it up here. I'm not going to deal with email today. No email. I don't want to deal with it. Because uh, it's pretty pretty cakewalk. I don't think we're going to... Because if I was doing something more substantial and something with longer legs, like if we were doing something over the span of like the six weeks, four weeks, six weeks, I would be more concerned at that point with how we would dig our feet in on the campaign. Um, but at this point, I'm not going to do that. I'm not really worried about it. So we'll just go with the Skin the Coliseum. I don't, know. I don't know. It's Staples Center. Oh, it's Staples Center. Whatever. Here, we'll just change it. Staples Center. Staples Center. All right. What else we got? We're going to go... Oh, man, this is great. Actually, this, it should be a celebrity pickup game, and Bill Murray should play. So we should have a celebrity... Pick up game against against someone. Who should they be against? Monsters? Against monsters slash actors. But but uh game should be uh should feature heavy cheating it literally should be like yeah i mean you make good points bill murray running i mean i i don't know i i, I have a great bill murray t-shirt a really great one that I got from the chive. So I gotta be honest with you. If he can if he can run, maybe he can maybe this is perfect though. Maybe he doesn't run and he just sits in a chair on the side and just shoots buckets or tells jokes with a microphone. How's that sound? Tells jokes with a microphone. Bill Murray tells jokes. Port side. Uh, actually, they should treat. They should do commentary like dodgeball. Commentary like dodgeball. We we'll have it. Maybe have it live on the Ocho. Live on the Ocho. I like that idea. What do you think of that, Ethan? You like? Let's shrink that down. Also, Ethan, how did your meeting go last week? I didn't ask you yet. I forgot to ask you how the meeting went. Yeah, I don't even know if he's in the movie, but I think for this purpose, it should be like a throwback thing. Like a real throwback experience. I got people writing me right now like crazy. <laughs> All right, so you got viral stunts. Um, kids, kids should obviously be involved. Children are always involved in these games. Um, children should be involved. 
children as annoying as they are i mean i have one and i love them but you can it's like farts you can stand your own you know what i mean like like farts children should be involved black um Yeah, I think Bill Murray should be there. If we can get him. If we can get him. Uh, we should play... I don't know. Then there should be like... I mean, what they're going to do is they're going to give back to the community. Obviously, this is end up a charity thing. Uh, so then we end up with a charity game. Charity game... One quarter. Slabs versus high school kids? I don't know. No, celebs versus celebs. High school versus high school. I, I don't even know if they can do this legally, but... Because I don't know if you can do that because of uh, recruiting stuff. But uh, we got that. No, I want to move that over. Got that. So you do like two quarters of basketball. You got the Monsters versus Actors game. You got the Toon Squad stuff going on. Bill Murray doing commentary with a microphone. Maybe Kevin Hart's there. I don't even know. Let's look who's in this movie. Who else is in this movie? IMDB.com. Look up Space Jam 2. Space Jam in it. Who else is in it? Don Cheadle. Um, Zendaya plays Lola. LeBron. No, these are voices. Bob Bergen. Candy Milo. I don't know who any of these people are. Uh, Jeff Bergman. He's an actor. He's Bugs Bunny. Katie McCabe. She plays an executive. All right, I don't really care. None of these people do anything for me. All right, so we do that. And at the end, um, we could do some, like, let's do some half-court shots. Let's do some half-court shots for, like, cars and stuff. Half-court shots for cars. Um, and then... Bron gives keys... Photo up, and then da, 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 da. and then they watch the movie. Then they lower it, bring out screens. Bring oh, it's not there. Nope, not there. Bring out screens. Watch movie. Yeah, because it's got a. If it were, if he were still with Cleveland, they would do it there. But he's in L.A., and that makes sense because it's Hollywood. All right, so where are we feeling about the viral stunts so far? Uh, one, if you like it. Five, if it's a bucket of goo. One, if you like it. Five, if it's a bucket of goo. I'm so extreme, I'm drinking a code red with a straw. That's how extreme I am. Uh, okay, we'll go down to video. Two. Sean's okay with it. Sean's okay with it. Ethan also gives it a two. Yeah, it's not winning anything, but I don't think it has to. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's good. It's not great. Um, It's kind of like we... Yes. All right, we'll do it. Sean Jackson will do it. Ethan, you're going to do the website. Website. Retro 96 website. Style. That's it. 
hub of content with with assets for movie. Sorry about that. I paused for a second because someone tried to call through. Someone I don't even know, of course. Oh, that'd be awesome. It's so good. It just stinks that they had to slide it over to, to that. All right, version 96. All right. Um, overload the site with uh, wallpapers for phones and tablets. I just, I don't know, for phone for phones. Double down on, you know, I actually, if I'm doing the retro site, it's actually going to be looked at on tablet better or on um, desktop better than phone so what i want to do is overload the site with wallpapers for phones and desktop to for dl download i'm gonna go for download not that we're on the dl but we're going dl I think there's a lot of assets would be good. What do you guys think of assets? You like assets? I like assets. I don't like creating assets. That's great. This is great. All right. So for SEO, because we want this to work so well, um, I don't want to cannibalize the SEO that we have for the original Space Jam. Um, so I think we're going to go here. Yeah. I mean, the stuff that we have is going to be good, John. I think that, you know, the stuff that's there is going to be good. You just want to put a ton of stuff out there for download that makes sense. That's cool. Um, and then just hope that it, that makes sense. Yeah, we have a person praising the Lord now. Praise the Lord to you as well, Pastor Arif. I hope you have a great day. Market the nostalgia. Here we go. This is what I was waiting for. Ethan comes with a big idea. Market the nostalgia. Make a mini app based on the eight nineties characters. Don't even have to introduce any newer spoilers. Just get the old fans super pumped. All right. So you know where we're going to put that? I am going to put that. Uh, do you want to put it on the website? Oh, no. You know how we did this last time? I'm going to remove digital PR just because, um, you know, you know. I said already I was going to move email. So let's move email. Oops. Not what I wanted to do. Hmm. Okay. And because Ethan hit a home run, I'm going to mini app. Oh, nope, those are not the right characters. The app with characters. Push nostalgia. Yep. This is a nostalgia play.
And I have no problem with apps. You know that. Big fan of apps. Big, big fan. They do a lot of really great stuff for campaigns because they live on your phone forever. And you can also grab information from them forever for marketing purposes. Yes. <laughs> Release the Snyder Cut. Release the Space Jam Cut. Oh, man, that'd be great. That's really funny. Release the Jordan Cut. Man, better. he's better than LeBron. Um, all right, so then how about this? I like that idea. Let's run with it. Not every idea has to be the best idea ever, but let's run with it. So let's then do this on SEO or social, but we'll do We'll just call it Release the Jordan Cut. How about that? <laughs> yeah, I got the mustache and then I gave that laugh off. I know. That's funny, right? <laughs> oh, my mom would be so proud of me right now. Um, we'll do Release the Jordan Cut. Do we like that? Is that sufficient? And then the idea is that what we'll do, promote the release of fictitious additional footage from the 1996 film release for the LeBron version to stir... up uh, fans and then what they could do actually is you know when they do um, those episodes of like movies or like oh my wifi is low real quick when they do those episodes of shows or movies uh, like Doctor Who does it where there's lost footage um, you get a little bit of like cartoon instead of just the full black and white episode you get a little bit of cartoon. That'd be cool, wouldn't right? So there, release the Jordan cut. I know it's not the same thing as the Snyder cut because we're not talking about the director. But, I mean, who who directed Space Jam? Do you know? I don't. But I know who Michael Jordan is. And also, we there's no way to think that the Michael Jordan didn't try and get some say in on the, that cut of Space Jam. I guarantee that that man, guarantee that that man was all in on getting that stuff done. He he, most definitely was was figuring that out. He was like, "Yeah, I'm in on that." So paid social, um, paid social. I want to emphasize. Let's let's do influencer. Where are we gonna go? Where are we going to go? Let's go over to influencer. Ah, uh, so it's a very good question, and I want to answer it with all the honesty I have in my heart. On a serious note, how do we handle the furry community in Lola Bunny? Because that'll be a thing. I wonder how Zootopia handled that stuff in the marketing department. I don't know, but i tell you how I would handle it. I would very carefully never, ever speak about it. Ever. No. I, I, I think you have to be very sensitive to it. Uh I think that pretending that it doesn't exist uh, angers the people in the community that exist and want recognition for being there. As long as they're not being gross, which you don't yuck other people's yums, right? So, but it, it, as long as no one's doing anything gross out in public uh, with your brand, um, you don't do anything. And as long as they're not violating your brand identity online or in a place where it could damage it, you don't have to step in. Um, so if it's, you know, but the minute they do, um, then you have to send cease and desist orders. I think that that's the only thing you need to be concerned with, uh, C and D, but, um, Lola, I mean, they made the step down to less, to sexualize her less because they did reduce breast size in the character for this film. Um, so I, I don't know, even so it's not going to matter. I mean, she's still a pretty bunny in a tank top and shorts. I mean, the shorts are longer too. They actually did that as well. Um, so they did make an effort, conceded, uh, conceded, concerted effort 
to uh, reduce the sexualization of the character. Um, but again, it's not going to matter because like if, if someone wants to be attracted to my Jake, the snake Roberts muscle figure, they're going to be attracted to that figure. It doesn't matter if he's, if he's pink, like a muscle figure or if he's a purple muscle figure, you know, something about him is hot to somebody. It's hot to somebody. Um, so it's just C and D if they're damaging the brand out in public and, and then that's it. And, you know, it's not, as long as they're not like at a con doing signings, passing themselves off as someone from, this is Warner brothers. So as long as they're not passing themselves off as a representative of Warner brothers, um, I don't think it'd be too big a deal. I mean, unless it's, unless it's bad, unless it's bad, <laughs> unless it's real. And, and then what's bad, you know, what is bad? So, but yeah, it's a very smart thing to be considering. I hope that was a good answer. I think sometimes when I answer questions, I'm like, man, I really hope that was a good answer. And then I'm alone in this room and, I, and I'm like, man, I hope that was a good answer because I'm never going to know. <laughs> I'll never know unless someone leaves an angry comment on YouTube telling me I'm wrong. Um, uh, let's do influencers. Uh, influencer, let's do a simple campaign. Uh, find two, three, two, th two, four, two to three. Um, TikTokers, let's go TikTokers, TikTokers. Um, for basketball, we'll just bring them into the basketball game to serve as celebrity players. I just I, I gotta be honest with you. You really want to use the the celeb angle with with influencers on this one, and let them use their audience to kind of guide the recognition of it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, I I appreciate it. It's it's one of those things. It's weird to me. Part of what I'm also getting at is like, I at 42, I sometimes feel like I'm still like 29, and I don't always have the the answer. I think. Um, and then something like that, because I've been served cease and desist letters on stuff that made sense, not anything like what we're talking about. And I've had to have them served, uh, for stuff that I've seen from a company I was working with. And, um, you know, as long as you're not damaging the brand, it always comes down to brand and brand strategy first. And like, that's why when I talk about like, you know, the one video I've put out in the past on my YouTube about you get X number of dollars, what do you do with it? And the answer, the first answer is like, you can learn or teach yourself everything else about what I do. Um, you may not do it as well or as fast to begin with. You may take years, but um, what you may not be good enough at is be a good designer. So get someone to professionally make your posters, you know, brand, brand, make your image and then keep that same image, you know, like, um, oh, it's under here. I can't get to it right now. But like, if this is, um, you know, you're going to make fidget spinners and this is what your fidget spinner is going to look like. And you build the pro. Uh, I'll be back. One, two, three. And I'm back. I hate that camera sometimes. You know, this is what your fidget spinner is going to look like, you know, and you're like, oh, this is the prototype. And then you find you send it off on the final design and then you switch it the very last minute because you feel like it to be like, oh, I like this size better and this design. Like you're throwing a complete wrench in everyone's plan plans, not just not just what you want, but what everyone wants. So, um, you know, brand is important. It's very important. Beyond that, what do you stand for? Who are you? What are your corporate values? You know, what do you, where are you going? Um, you know, how do you feel about this? How do you treat people with disabilities? What do you identify, um, you know, you, your corporate vision as? So, you know, even if you're talking about a, a film company, what, what, what kind of films do you make? You know, why do you make them? What's your why? Why do you make movies? So you need to know these things. You're a brand. Uh, SEO, I'm going to leave uh, video. I know I just kind of jumped right back in. I'm going to skip digital PR and email, like I said before. SEO, we're going to wrap it with video here. Um, we're going to go to video with uh, trailers for, this is TikTokers, to share at before game um, one. Um, we're going to have uh, 15 and 30, oops, not 20, it's 15 and 30 for social. I didn't do social either other than like the release to Jordan cut because I'm not really feeling it. 15 and 30 for social because they don't really need it. I mean, everything everything here is like by the numbers. And what's by the numbers? Like you do your, your pick your cadence, uh, set your content calendar. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to every single day, I'll post this on Monday, this on Tuesday, this on Wednesday, this on Thursday, this on Friday, next week, 
this on Monday. This, you know, like it's just, it's very simple. Like I have a behind the scenes footage on Tuesday. Next next Tuesday, I'll have uh, behind the scenes footage from this. Like it could be really, really exciting, and you could do something incredibly dynamic. But I think realistically, the dy- dynamicism is going to come from dynamicism. Dynam. What is the word anyway? It's going to come from trying to promote that big event and using behind the scenes footage. I just really just changed my mind. Damn it. Um, behind the scenes footage from that event is going to be what matters the most because that's going to get people the most jazzed. And I think also talking about this fictional release as well as pushing the mini app. Um, so I think that those are going to be the really big things that are going to push this. And I think that's it. That's where we're at. And yeah, it's pretty good. I th- Yeah, I think, I mean, you're right. Okay, fine, Sean. We'll put it out there. I wasn't saying that we're not going to do these things. I was saying that I wasn't going to do them today. But you're fine. You're right. Uh, 90 second, 90 second premiere at, uh, I'm just going to do IGN. 60 at, uh, let's do Entertainment Weekly, and I'm picking my audiences. Come on, there we go. I was trying to see around my screen, <laughs> my pop filter. <laughs> I'm trying to see around it, uh, and that, and then we'll do. You want to do a sneak peek? We'll do a sneak peek. Sneak peek. I'm gonna do it on Reddit and Twitter. We're looking for nerds. There. Did we do that, John? Does that work? I'm not doing Pinterest. I'll do Pinterest. Here, for you. Doing for Pinterest, too. If it does something. I don't know. Like I keep saying, I've never been successful on it, so I always forget that it's there. I feel really bad saying that. I really do. I feel horrible. And now it's better. All right, so that's that. We'll wrap this. Uh, we'll call this part a wrap, and then we'll move back over to uh, the other deck. So we'll go back to me. Boop. Boop to me. We'll come back over to Let's Talk Marketing the Deck. Because I wanted to talk a little bit about something that I put up the other day. This is actually what started a little bit of the uh, super negative Nancy stuff, but also super important that I wanted to put out there for – it's kind of like a touch point. If you guys didn't see it in the Facebook group, um, I wanted you to just kind of take a look. Uh, something I put together, just kind of some more clever film marketing. Um, something to do is like a six-point checklist just to kind of do – you don't have to do all of them every day. Just kind of touch base with uh, one website daily. I put this up before. Like build a relationship with a site. Just get out there. Talk to someone, regardless of who the site is. I talked to this about, I talked to Sean in the past about the Sean Jackson here in the past about this and the fourth. It doesn't matter who the site is or if they're good or if they like you or not. Just, you know, like if they think you're, you know, they can think your work sucks. Just, just talk to them, build a relationship because they may open another door for you. Um, if you got behind the scenes stuff, just kind of as an offshoot, like if you got behind the scenes stuff that's on Instagram, I was talking to a gentleman, um, Russ Odom, the other day. Um, that's a really great way to just open up a whole new world for viewers behind the scenes. Just get them a little bit more immersed in what you're doing and why what you're doing matters because they can see the actors. Um, they can see kind of what you're doing. Get, and don't always give them a spell. Uh, don't give them everything. Give them some stuff. Um, if you use Twitter, use it to show your personality. Just let people see who you are. Let them know what's going on and what you're doing. Um, you don't have to give them everything. You don't have to give them every bit of the secret sauce, but give them a little bit. Um, I just went over this. Just create one set of art assets. If you make one poster, 
keep that one poster. Please don't make 16 posters. Make up your mind, hold to it. You can change it very late, but don't go every six days. I've seen people recently that showed me their poster for their film and they're so stoked. And then literally a week later, they showed me their new poster. And I was like, you just shared the last poster with everyone on your on your Facebook page that you created for your film that you're filming right now. So focus on your email list. Jay Horton talks about this a lot too, man. He's got thousands of videos. <laughs> like you just... Prune that list. Make sure your friends are segmented away from people that may, in fact, not care about your film. Make sure the people that are into horror are nowhere near people that are into drama. Keep those people separate. Does it take time? Yes. Is it worth the time? Yes. Because if 40% of the people open an email uh, that's a horror email as compared to 4% of the people because they don't give a flying hoot nanny. (laughs) <laughs> I wanted to say that today so bad. Um, it, it'll be worth it, man. And also, you'll feel real good when you see stats like that. I'm going to tell you right now. Like, we talked about negativity at the beginning of the show. You want something super positive? You see data like that. We are in a data-driven industry. Don't pretend that everything's driven on anecdotal evidence and everybody talking about how this film did this and this film did that and my film did this. No, it's based on data. My film did these numbers here because I did this, 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 and this. I did this, 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 and this on my next film, and it didn't work. So I ended up doing this, 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 and this. And you keep trying your different stuff, and you look at the numbers. And that is how you know what actually works for what film, for you, for your genres. That's the only way to do it. Uh, And then last, bring a content calendar together, man. Make a calendar. Use a scheduler. If you want to use Sprout Social or Hootsuite or I know I talked about Koros Marketing because that's super expensive, but you can use something like uh, what was Agora, Agora Pulse, which I think is the one that uh, Jay Horton uses. We talked about it in our um, our interview that's up right now on his, on his uh, account and then also over in his group as well, too. Like, use it. Just freaking use it and take your advantage. Like you just pound in a bunch of content and then sit back and just watch what happens. It'll make such a big difference because when you're doing it for a brand, people aren't really paying attention to what you're doing. They don't necessarily care because they're so used to being inundated with information from brands, Nestle's and Snickers and Target and uh, onomatopoeia.com. And uh, when they see you doing it, they're not noticing something so human and, and engaging as a conversation, as a piece. And you can still respond on your own, on your phone separately. But, like, you really can win. You really, really, really can win and come out on top. And it's so valuable to have those conversations and those wins. And oh, picking up my notebook, um, you know, it's, it's big. It's just a big deal. All right. So here, just do it. That's all I'm asking. Just do it. Do it for you. Do it for you. Ready? Here's the best part. Words of the week. All right. So this is the part of the show that every week comes up. My son, seven-year-old Carter, who last night had game fuel, and guess what he did this morning? He decided to sleep in until nine. So guess who got to do words of the week this week? My lovely wife. My wife went into the back end of this deck. You got to put in three random words that she grabbed from random word generator, which I had to explain to her how to use. Um, And she put in these three words that I get to now either define, use in a sentence, or try to justify the existence of as it pertains to marketing, film, or film marketing, or my life. Actually, that's four things. So I have not seen these words. I do not know what they are, and it always throws me for a loop, and it's super fun. If you want to see me look like an ass, now is your time. Otherwise, you've had 40, 53 minutes to do so, and then also two instances where my camera did this overheaty, weird flip thing. That's fun, too. Time for a new camera. Here we go. Curtain. Oh, okay. So the most important thing you got to know is that what I do here every single week is pull back the curtain. I want you guys to know what happens on the other side of the marketing curtain. When we talk about working in film, working in marketing, we want to deliver solid results that are going to get you to where you need to be for your film to be profitable or for you to make money. And the only way you're going to do that is if you learn the things that we've done, tried and true, me personally, for 17 years. And I give that away. I give that away because I have a serious why. And my why I will give to you at the end of these three words. Ugh, curtain. Regulation. A lot of the time, I feel like I'm coming up to overtime. And I'm at the end of regulation as regards of this show. Because I don't feel like there's enough time to tell you guys everything I need to tell you. And every week I feel like I've forgotten something. And I get off the, the show and I'm like, oh, I forgot this one thing. So I started taking notes. I started taking notes before the show and I set them down. 
And then I look at them while I'm there so I can remember to tell you things that need to tell you. And the most important thing I need to tell you, uh, this is nothing to do with regulation. Regulation just could be a loss or a win or whatever, is that I appreciate you being here every week with me. Uh, it's a lot of fun for me, and I enjoyed it for 22 weeks now. Uh, we've been chilling and hanging out and talking about marketing uh, and film. And I've kind of just been here as the goofy guy sitting in his office with, uh, well, first his laptop and now a camera pointed at him every week. But I appreciate it. And um, I think I have a regulation sized basketball head. Yes. And lastly, I have an attention to detail problem. Um, I always have. My problem has been that as I get closer to mining the details that I need to be paying attention to, I get shiny object syndrome and move away from paying the attention to them that they deserve. As I've gotten older, I've gotten better at them. So the one thing I need to be held accountable on from you guys is this. If I say something like I'm going to give you X or Y, I need you to hold me accountable and email me or write me inside Facebook and make me do the I've held you accountable. I had a person in episode 12 say that I said to them, I was going to give them two email addresses for reviews for their film. And I didn't do it because they emailed me and I lost their email in my terrible email inbox, which was spark, which is terrible. It segments everything weird and it's not their fault. It's mine. My attention to detail wasn't there. I didn't follow through. Uh, and I didn't realize it till today when someone else wrote me about the exact same episode because they're watching my back catalog, which is touching that someone has watched 12 episodes of my show so far and is quoting stuff that I said. Um, please uh, help me at times do this. I appreciate that you're here and that we work through this stuff together every week. It is awesome uh, and a lot of fun. And I consider you my extended LTM family. Please do join uh, the Let's Talk Marketing group and participate and be active. I want it to be uh, a fun place where we can safely talk about marketing and film in a way that other groups don't do it because I don't want to be a group of 90,000 people where it's the same 1,000 people spamming each other about marketing services and that's all they're doing uh, because that pisses me off and that's why I've left those groups. Um, So that said, uh, one to five, Uh, Give me this, and then I'll give you my why. One to five, one being great, five being garbage. How did I do today? Let's see if I can get the straw out of the bottle. It fell inside. Mm. Super extreme. Very kind, Sean. That's nice. Wait till you see what I did for the where to find me page. You guys are going to be baffled by this grossness. That's one. One to five. One is great. Five is dookie. I accept all forms of of, uh, numbers because I am not so vain as to accept the idea that I'm the best. I'm decent. So... While we wait for anyone else to vote. Um, no, my why is pretty simple. I mean, it, it's it took a long time to come to, but it is uh I watched I watched my relationships, all of them, my important ones. My my best friend who's my writing partner and creator, co-creator with King of Fitness. Um <laughs> I am not a number. Well, thank you. I'm a 22. Um and I watched my my marriage. I had issues with my wife out of this. Um, just erode because of either I was writing too much, or working on the, the movie too much, or I was uh, working too much on the marketing for the film. And well, I'm saying film, but the web series because that's what we broke it into. And uh, it just plain, it just wasn't it wasn't right. And uh, I, I got to a place where I made so many mistakes that had me scrambling and I was in a really yucky place as far. I just don't want to see anyone else going through what I went through because I wasn't listening to the people that I should have trusted. So all I'm trying to do is become a person that you guys can trust so I can help you. It's a pretty simple why for me. So, and that is pretty simple. 
No, where to find me? Oh, blow it up big. Oh, where to find me? This is my favorite new GIF. I found this today because um, <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't find a GIF that made sense. And then I found this man. And my son actually is like, why is this guy's head so small? And then he realized he was leaning, leaning over. But anyway, where to find me? If you're on Facebook, I am at Sean Michael Smith. On Twitter, at Sean M. Smith. If you're on Clubhouse, check me out. I'm finally getting active on there. I'm Sean M. Smith as well. Instagram and Twitch, both S squared 22. On YouTube, I am Sean Smith, capital S's on the Sean Smith 22. Um, it is, there's another guy that's Sean Smith 22, and he has like a, a weird video on there. I don't know. I'm working. I got to get to 100 subscribers. So let's get there together. I'm in the 40s finally. And uh, this was the first week we took a break because of our trip to New York. But uh, I have a podcast that comes out every Tuesday that I do with my seven-year-old son. It is called Potato Salad Marmalade. Uh, it is a big, 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 big deal uh, in my household. Uh, but I would absolutely love for you guys to check it out sometime. Uh, again, potatosaladmarmalade.com is where you can find it. Um, and I would like to say that I appreciate you guys coming. Uh, one last thing is to show my appreciation. If you guys have never taken me up on it, I would love to see if I can help you guys get unstuck on any sort of project you're on. This is not a pitch for business. It's not how I work. Um, if, in fact, the only way that I ever do business with people is if there's a fit uh, for both of us. And I don't always have uh, the ability to uh, say people work uh, for me and for what I do. So that's fine. But uh, I'd love to do a one-time 45-minute call. Just sit down, chat. Um, just kind of commiserate and see what's going on. Uh, go.onesub.com slash Sean M. Smith. Um, grab the info. Grab a time that makes sense. Just sit down. Let's just, let's just shoot the shit. Commiserate. We can talk about films. We can talk about pro wrestling. We can talk about soccer. We can talk about Call of Duty. We can talk about all the things you're into. Um, you know, and that's all that matters. I would absolutely love to discuss stuff with you um, and just see where you're at. And uh, that would be super cool for me. But that is it for this week. Uh, as always, I am Sean, uh, Sean M. Smith, M as in Michael, or M as in man, or magnet, or magma, magma. Um, but uh, that is it. I would like to say thank you again for showing up. This has been my co-host, uh, Code Red, and also uh, my, my first guest, uh, Jake the Snake Roberts' muscle figure. The entire rest of the collection is in the top drawer of my desk. I took them down when I moved my desk over, so... Mm. But guys, next week, uh, it's going to be another show of me being awesome. I would like to say thank you for being here with me. One day we'll have music. I will have like a little, little DJ pads. And I'll probably get shut down by Facebook. Um, <laughs> it's it's going to happen. Uh, Sean, claps to you. Guys, claps to everybody. Thanks for coming out. Uh, if you head to the Facebook group, I will end up dropping the link inside uh, the thread to this actual uh, event so that you can pick up uh, anywhere you want for the Jamboard. So uh, check that out. Peace out, guys. We will talk soon. See you next week.